Hey everyone, Josh here. So we're back at the TDI Passats. So this is a different one than what I filmed with last time. Uh, I did heater core in the last one. So this one, you obviously clicked on the link so you know it's getting a timing belt. Uh, it also has heater core issue. Um, in my last heater core video that I'll put a link up there, there somewhere. Um, I just basically outlined that we have, that there's a known issue with the Passat heater cores and this one has that issue as well. So it's a little less kilometers on it than the other one, but I don't know if it's been replaced, so we'll wait and see. I might have a part two to that heater core video. Uh, I've got a filter idea to try and get some of that gunk out and hopefully prolong heater core life. So yeah, if I end up filming a part two, I'll put a thing up here somewhere. So we're doing a timing belt, full timing belt kit on here. So I'm gonna outline the special tools you need, what you need for the kit and obviously how to do it. So let's get started. So first off, we're gonna cover off parts. So you can get a kit from your favorite online retailer. So this is a Continental kit from ID Parts. So it comes with your belts. Mittens tensioner is what you want. Pulleys, nice little paper with all your torque specs that I'll take a picture of here shortly. Uh, it's got a Giba or Geba However you want to say that water pump. It's got a steel impeller or metal impeller. Um, you can also go with plastic. That'll be what's from factory. You got the pros and cons and it's been debated to death on which way to go. So you make your decision from there. ID Parts has all these bolts, which I'm hoping I don't need all of them. Uh, you can also get extra uh, stud for the tensioner and harmonic bolts. Which I live in Ontario, so everything's covered in salt and sand. So better to need them or to have them and not need them versus need them and not have them. So that's it for parts. Um, you need coolant. I've got roll concentrate. You can also be fancy and get a uh, Volkswagen uh, premix. So with this concentrate, it's obviously G13 compatible. You need to get distilled water to mix it 50 50. And. Yeah, that should be it for parts. So as far as tools, there's a right way and a less right way to do it. Um, you can do the mark and pray, which you mark the belt, mark your all your gears on your engine, and then just transfer the marks over to here and make sure that you put it on the right way. Um, that'll kind of work if you're uh, good with paint markers. The other option is getting the lock tools, which... Um, That's the lock tools for the cam and for the high pressure fuel pump. That's also the same key for the PD cam as well as the ALH injection pump lock. You can also use a drill bit, which I think is 15 64ths. I'll put a lock or a text in there if it's not that size. And you also need a crank lock, a couple different versions of this. This is the Metal Nerd kit for the PD and the common rail so it comes with paper on how to use it so we'll cover that off when we get there and then you're obviously just going to need your normal triple squares islands torques all that good stuff so nothing too out of the blue um, yeah so as far as torque specs I'll take a picture of this so it's in there I'll freeze the frame and stuff so you've got torque spec of everything Some nice pictures you've also got special tools you need should take two hours if you're good I guess and then basically removal and installation so that's got everything you need that's the first time I've seen that in these timing belt kits but this is my first common rail uh, the other thing you can do is if you order this from ID parts you can get a cool poster which it says for the TDI Jetta and Golf, which this is a Passat, but the torque specs down here at the bottom are all the same. So if you're going to be working on your car a lot, that makes some cool wall art to match your other wall art. So quickly before I jump to the time-lapse camera, uh, the plan here is we're going to leave the engine mount on. I've got the bolts to take it apart, but that's just more work. 
uh, the tensioner you can get in behind it with a uh, vice grip to get it out, like the stud. Um, so we're going to get the fuel filter kind of out of the way, the uh, DPF differential sensor out of the way, and then you can get this cover up, and then uh, we'll have to go underneath and I think probably take the uh, shielding out to get at that bottom uh, timing belt cover, get serpentine belt, all that good stuff off. So that's the plan. Uh, if you want to take that mount off, you basically need to get a jack with a piece of wood on the oil pan to kind of hold it up when you take that off. And then uh, hopefully your kit comes with all the bolts that you need. So we're going to get started here. So a quick recap of where we're at, um, stuff I don't think really got captured very nicely with the uh, camera. So this holder, you just kind of pull it up, this is kind of locks in on that DPF differential sensor. Uh, your, let me get the light in here. This one, same kind of deal, this top piece that hooks onto the fuel filter, if you pry it up and then push the whole thing down, it unhooks from your fuel filter there. I'm going to unbolt this, probably get that out of the way so that I can get at the pump easier. My plan also is to get this coolant line off, just kind of tuck it away nicely. Uh, as far as draining coolant, I took it off the pump for the air to water intercooler. It worked pretty nice on the heater core video that I did. So I, th I guess we'll see how much actually drains out. So you obviously gotta take that bottom shield off. Um, I had a couple questions last time about the bolts. So this one was missing a bunch, but you got two, four on both sides. And then I think you might have one in front, but it was missing as well. And then three, T40s on the back. This one was missing one. And then your wheel arch. Basically all the ones you can see. Not real rocket science. And then there's two um, two that go up into here and here from the bumper. And then these ones are for your underbody shield. So now we're underneath, so this tensioner, I'm not sure if this is the right way, but this is the way I'm going to do it. So if you like that, if I had a spare hand, you get the belt off. Um, triple squares in here, as you can see, nice and rusty. And then there's the cover in behind there, I guess we'll take a look at it when I get there. So I got this dampener off. So the pulley was a little rusty. So a few little hits, kind of at three and nine and six and 12, I guess, on that inside hub here. Kind of freed it up and then you just kind of shimmy it out. So next up is taking this shield off. So that's T30 screws. Uh, one thing to be cautious of is if you have a hard on for long reach sockets, and you're doing this with the engine in the car still. Got one bolt right up there. 
and the long reach. Torx isn't gonna fit, so make sure you've got a short one or some Torx keys. So I'm gonna get that off and then we get the shield out of here and then we'll get this thing set in time. So we got this cover off, obviously. So as far as timing, that rectangle mark should be about 12 o'clock and this raised hump would be eight o'clock roughly. So if you have the Volkswagen tool T150, you'll basically slip it in on top of the gears and then the pin will engage into here. If you have the Metal Nerd one and you happen to have lost this page, your bottom, which currently has this screw in it, will go on the hump. These two here would go into the bolt holes and then that would engage into the block like that. So that's quick and easy. Uh, the, as far as the top here, so your crank can be locked, like your crank rotates twice to these pulleys once, so you need to make sure this window, for example, um, that window, you can just see, I'm not sure, you'll see a hole in the head where that's supposed to go. So that's that slotted window there that needs to be at the eight o'clock, I guess as well. And then yeah, you can kind of rotate it around if you have a mirror. I don't think I can get it any better of a picture than that. And then your pump. Well, this is frustrating to get a picture of it, but there you can see. Come on. So you can see the hole right there. And then you've got that little fork U shape. So that'll be the lock for the pulley that goes into the head. So that's your lock for your high pressure pump. So if that's lining up and that one's lining up, you know you're on number one top dead center on the compression. So that's where you wanna be. So you can put your locks in. But before I do that, I'm just gonna crack these loose these three here, as well as the three on here. And that way I don't have to have the counter hold tool. I can just use the compression of the engine. So we got the slack, like tensioner backed off. So go right counterclockwise, yeah, counterclockwise, hits a stop. So that's pretty as loose as it can get. You can put a five mil Allen in that spot right there. And then if you turn this, your, uh, this one clockwise, that'll actually make it a bit more loose, but for removal, I don't really care about that. I can just take some of these idlers off and then belt to come off, no problem. Um, this new one, I believe, we'll just use the traditional triangle, whatever Volkswagen wants to call it. That usually comes with the tensioner itself, but it didn't this time. But yeah, it's just a small little chunk of steel. So we'll worry about that when we get there. So I'm gonna get the rollers out, get the belt out. I'm not sure how well this is gonna be picking it up, but um, the tensioner will be the big thing. So I'll make sure I switch to my phone and we'll uh, walk you through that.
Okay, so it doesn't matter so much taking it apart, but so the stud and the tensioner have to come out together on this setup. So taking it out, I'm just gonna clamp my uh, Nipex pliers onto the stud. We'll turn it out. Um, to put it back in, basically what we'll do is we'll slide this all the way out and basically put, th put the pliers on right here because there won't be anything threaded. It's farther in in the block where it's threaded and the nut obviously doesn't go that far because the tensioner is right there. So. Looks like that. So when we're going back in, we'll set it like that or like that and we'll grab onto there because this part's the piece that goes in the block and that's where the knot goes. So the last of the old parts is this bottom tensioner as well as the water pump here. Uh, so you can just kind of look at the old water pump or the new water pump, figure out which, where the bolts are and stuff. Looks like this one's been gooped up on the reinstall, so I don't think that's oil, I think that's that black aviation sealant stuff. So yeah, I'll take that off, take that stuff off, off camera, because I don't think I can really get a good picture of it, and then uh, start reassembling. So it's a good chance it's probably stuck, especially with that aviation sealant stuff on it. You don't want to pry too hard, this is just plastic there. Let's see if there's something underneath I can pry on. A little more difficult when you're trying to videotape it as well. So underneath wasn't really working well. I didn't want to break the aluminum uh, cover there. So I actually got a crack loose here. I did just put the old bolt back in the top tensioner hole. Just go down with the pry bar like that. And then you got something nice and sturdy to pry on. So it, it, it had moved. Maybe go back down again and see. So it's stuck. I got it out. The floor was just starting to dry up nicely. <laughs> it went flying out and coolant went everywhere. So anyway, so this has been done once already. It's got a hepu, 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 keep you. Anyways, it's got a metal, uh, impeller in there already it's been gooped up pretty good and 
I think the weep hole is starting to weep a little bit. So yeah. So just comparing the old one to the new one. So that's, pretty sure that's a date code of 1115. So 2015. Whereas this one, as you can see, is 0221. It's now 0222, but that's when it's going in. I uh, cleaned up the, uh, not that you can really see it, but cleaned up where the O-ring sits in there. with a little bit of fine sandpaper. Uh, the O-ring, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of coolant on there to help it slip in so you don't tear the uh, O-ring. And then, uh, yeah, torque the nuts, or the bolts, and then uh, start putting some rollers together. Uh, just one thing is you need to make sure you've got a fairly low torque wrench. So this one goes down to 5 or 10 foot-pounds because the water pump is... Eleven foot pounds, so yeah, you need a fairly low torque wrench. So just keep that in mind before you uh, start this as well. Okay, so we're gonna install this tensioner now. So that's how that stud's gonna go. That's your tensioning guide. Then you want to make sure that tab is located in. It's home right there. So, zoom back out. So I'm gonna get this filter out of the way so I can get it in there with two hands. It might be kind of a tricky spot. Let's give it a try. Okay, so you want to make sure that tab is located in the cover. And of course, I hit the mirror. Um, there. Make sure that's located in there. If it's not in there all the way, you tighten it down, you're going to bend that and possibly break that tensioner. And then you won't be driving your car that night. So, uh, yeah, make sure that's in there, right? So now we'll get that tensioner slackened off and then snug the nut up and get some more of these timing components put in. So I'm not sure if I included this in this part or not, um, but for slacking the tensioner off, you'd go fully counterclockwise. That's what we did on removal. Uh, but you can also get it more slack to help with getting the belt on. So this one, you can use the triangle tool I'm sure the page that I put a screenshot on will have that part number. Uh, the This tensioner, you actually use the 5 mil Allen to go along with your 6 mil for in here. So basically, and I'm blocking the light.
So it's gonna go up against it. And then you'll see your tensioner indicator is gonna move. And that's actually gonna slacken that off more yet. So that you can get the belt on. We'll snug that nut up. You can get the belt on, you have more room to play with. And then you're gonna loosen that off, take that triangle out and then do, go back this way without that triangle in to get the belt tensioned. So we're ready for the new belt. So all the new pulleys, new hardware, all that good stuff is on. You wanna make sure that you can rotate both of these pulleys. This one was actually seized and required a bit of persuasion to get moving again. Um, so they recommend installing it up the backside, the new belt. Um, I don't think it's too big of a deal. The main thing is you want to make sure this is more or less clockwise. The book recommends fully clockwise because when you tension the tensioner, it's gonna pull the belt this way and that's gonna obviously rotate them counterclockwise. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get too picky as long as they don't bottom out in the slots after it's tensioned, that's the main thing. Um, if they do bottom out, then you might want to jump a tooth on it and then uh, try again. So we got all three lock tools in. So cam, pump, and crank is top dead center. So you'll start down at the crank because that pulley doesn't move. Feed it up around and then these can move to where they need to be to make sure that everything's set at top dead center. So we're going to throw the belt on here now and uh, tension it up. There we go, everything's on, somewhat centered. I've got lots of room on the slots to go either way on both uh, pulleys. So I can get this tensioner set up correctly and uh, tension it while everything's loose here. And uh, yeah, once it's tensioned up, we'll uh, Rotate it a couple over by hand a couple times after these are tightened up and we'll check and make sure everything's still in time correctly. Okay, so I did my two full revolutions. You gotta turn it by the crank. You wanna go clockwise. So that should get all the slack to the backside. Reinstall your crank lock. And then you're just gonna check cam timing and pump timing. So I struggle a lot getting this on the camera. But anyways, you should be able to get the lock tools back in or it should be pretty, pretty close. Uh, this one's pretty well spot on on both the pump and the cam. So I'm happy with that. But the um, tensioner backed off. You kind of want it in the center of the window. I'm back a little bit. So I'm just going to reset that tensioner and then I think I'm good to go. So I'm going to end this video here. Um, I still need to do the heater core yet. And it's 11 o'clock and this is my drive to work in the morning. So if you took it apart, you should be able to get it back together. Um, yeah, once the this is together, if you wanted to get coolant on it, you could probably, or coolant in it, you could probably even run it just like this without the lock tools in obviously. But just run it and make sure everything looks good before doing all the shields and stuff. Make sure everything runs nice and true and uh, then you should be good to go. So this two revolutions by hand is really important to make sure you didn't screw up somewhere. That way you know two full revolutions, everything's still in time and you're not gonna have any 
valves meeting the pistons. So hope this video helped. And uh, yeah, if you've got a facade as well and you need a heater core, check out some of the my heater core video and maybe the part two that I'm going to be doing with this one.